Hey, it's Dr. Fanistel. Are you somebody who thinks that talking to your inner child is a bunch of nonsense? Woo-woo psychobabble for whiners? Does it make you think of crystals and scented candles? Or are you on the opposite end of the spectrum? Are you somebody who's been working on your inner child for years? You bought the workbooks, you done the journaling, and you're still stuck? Either way, I want to talk to you about what the inner child actually is, and I want to do it from a neuroscience perspective. If you're skeptical about the inner child, stick with me, because there's some real science behind this. In this video, I want to talk to the engineers, the skeptics, the pragmatists, the scientists, and show you that mind-body medicine is not magical thinking. There is solid science behind many of these medical success stories. And if you're somebody who's already been working on your inner child, I want to talk to you about why trying to heal it might not be the best framework and how a different approach might give you a better way to rewire your brain. And then at the end, I'll share how I answered a question from somebody in our YouTube community who asked me, do you think we have an inner child? Let's start with my favorite story about brain development. This is a story told by Gabor Mate. He says, when I was two months old, the Nazis invaded Hungary. My dad was sent to a labor camp and there I was with my mom in Budapest. And a few days later, she has to call the doctor. She says, Dr. Gabby hasn't eaten for three days. He won't nurse, he won't touch a bite of food. He's crying all the time, something's going on. And the doctor says, well, Mrs. Mate, of course I'll come see him, but I have to tell you, all my Jewish babies are crying. Now, what did we babies know about Nazis in World War II? Nothing. What were we getting from our mothers? What were we feeling? Here's where the neuroscience comes in. From age zero to seven, the human brain is wiring together approximately one million new neuronal connections per minute. Per minute. Can you imagine trying to build a brain that rapidly in an environment that's screaming, danger, danger, nothing's okay? These circuits were not a disease or a disorder. They were adaptive. They were useful. Hypervigilance made sense. Mate goes on to talk about how he needed antidepressants later in life to deal with stress. And no wonder. I developed a hypervigilant brain. I don't even remember it. His autonomic nervous system remembered it though. And here's the neuroscience. We're all born with about 100 billion neurons in our brains, largely unconnected. This is like having a giant Lego set with 100 billion pieces and the instructions are, put this together in a way that will get you through the world safely. Some circuits are already wired at the time of birth. Breathing, essential. Swallowing, also essential. Not choking, very high priority. But other circuits, the circuits of emotional regulation, self-soothing, threat detection, attention, these all get wired after birth in response to the environment. This is both the brilliance and the vulnerability of our brains. They wire together in order to keep us safe, not in order to make us feel relaxed at a dinner party three decades later. And there are now hundreds, probably thousands of studies in the medical and scientific literature showing us that brains change after birth. They change in size, they change in shape, they change in connectivity. These are very real changes. Environment shapes the brain. And hypervigilant circuits don't form only in extreme circumstances like war. It can happen because there was some stress in the household or the parents were emotionally unavailable, even though they loved the children. It could be that there was an illness in the household at a young age and there was a lot of stress that the child picked up on. It could be that you were a round peg in a square hole of the education system or in your family system and things just weren't quite right. It didn't matter how much love you got. There was no big abuse. Maybe it's something later in life. Maybe you had cancer several years ago when your brain got hypervigilant and still running those circuits. The cause doesn't matter. If you live your life slightly on edge, rehearsing all the potential worst case outcomes while you're brushing your teeth every night. It may be because your brain is adaptive and these circuits can persist no matter how high functioning you are, no matter how good your coping skills are. If you're here because of chronic pain, anxiety, or emotions that sometimes hijack your steering wheel, acknowledging those emotions rather than shoving them under the rug or telling yourself to get on with it is often the path to real relief. This brings me to an important point for those of you who are trying to heal your inner child. You are not broken. Early life trauma can leave deep marks, but it doesn't mean that you have a defective brain 
or a chemical imbalance. You have a healthy brain that did what brains are supposed to do. It adapted to keep you safe. Those hypervigilant circuits are not your personality, they're not your identity, and they're not your destiny. You did not choose for these to happen. These circuits developed outside of your conscious awareness, and they're not your fault. Some circuits never fully disappear, but all circuits can be changed. It's called neuroplasticity. One great way to learn how to start changing these circuits is my online class that I've been teaching for about five years now. I'm evangelistic about it. I've seen hundreds of people improve with it. We practice exercises, we debrief afterwards, there's Q&A time, and I just know it's a fantastic way to change your brain. But mind-body medicine is a form of self-care. I like to say that we're gonna use the conscious mind to change some of the seemingly automatic processes going on in the brain and the body. And you will figure it out for yourself. You can keep watching videos, do it however you want. If you don't wanna take my class, there are other ways to do it. I'm just throwing it out there that I'm evangelistic about this class. And if you wanna sign up for it, check out my website. There is a profound difference between telling yourself, I'm broken, I have a disease, I have a disorder, versus someone who says, I got some neural circuits and I'm working on changing them. That shift alone, seeing yourself as a capable person who has some agency over their nervous system can make all the difference. It can help you perhaps learn to set boundaries with others if that's something you need to work on. It might help you break the cycle of intergenerational trauma for the first time in your family. Or maybe it just gives you the confidence to say a kind word to the clerk at the grocery store instead of silently panicking in the checkout line. So, do we have an inner child? Here's how I answered that question. Inner child is shorthand for neural circuits that developed early in life that continue to inform our way of being, our automatic responses, and our worldview. These circuits once helped us survive, and rewiring them isn't always easy. Some of them may slowly fade away, some of them may never disappear completely. But just like some of my alcoholic patients who wake up every morning and say one day at a time, only to find out that a decade later, they've had a decade of sobriety, many of my patients with anxiety or chronic pain or chronic hypervigilance do a little exercise one day at a time. It's a few minutes a day. And they find out that 10 years later, they've had a decade of better days with less anxiety, less pain, less suffering, more freedom. Healing implies that you're broken. This work is not about getting rid of uncomfortable feelings because you're broken. This work is about becoming more comfortable with the feelings you already have because you're okay. You may have cracks in your psyche, but you can still sing your song. I love these words from the song Anthem by Leonard Cohen. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. You're not broken. You're okay, and your light can still shine. All right, I'm Dr. Brad Fanestell. Thank you for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.